Hello, welcome to REGARD, Regulatory Guidance for Academic Research of Drugs and Devices. So I thought I would um, talk to you about determining whether or not the medical device that you are planning to use in your study meets the criteria for exemption from a full IDE. So we've put together a flowchart to help you with your decision. So if you have a device, you're going to click on Investigational Device, or you can use Devices up here in the top menu bar. So Investigational Device Exemption, the definition is here. Is my study exempt? Let's go there. So here's our flowchart for determining is my study exempt from an IDE. If the objective of the study is to determine safety and or effectiveness, of the device is the first question that you want to determine. If the answer is no, your study is not looking at the device itself, then it's not considered a device study and it's not subject to the IDE regulations. However, if the study is to evaluate the device itself and you answer yes, then the study meets the scope of IDE regulations. And the next question we need to ask is, is this device an FDA approved product and are you using it as it's approved or are you using it off-label? If you are using a product that is not FDA approved, then the next question is, are you using this to make a diagnostic decision? If the answer is no, then the study is not exempt from IDE regulations. And the next question would then be, is there significant risk? And to the FDA, there's only two types of risk, significant risk and non-significant risk. And we have definitions for risk, and I'll show you those in a minute. If your device presents a non-significant risk and it's not FDA approved, then the IRB will consider this study under what's known as an abbreviated IDE. So an abbreviated IDE is not something that you need to apply to the FDA for. It's an agreement on how the study is going to be monitored with the IRB acting on the FDA's behalf. So let's go back up here. You answered yes. The objective of the study is the device itself. And in this case, it's an FDA approved product. So then the next question, are you using it as approved on the label? If no, then you follow the same field that we did for diagnostic. If the answer is yes, it's being used per label, very simple, study is exempt from IDE regulations. Now over here, if you answer yes, the device is being used as a diagnostic, then we have some criteria that we need to consider. And that is, does the testing involve invasive or non-invasive procedures or invasive sampling that presents significant risk? Is energy being introduced? That could be electrical, radiation, laser. Is the testing being confirmed by another standard care method? Now, if you answered no to any of these questions, then your study would not be exempt from IDE regulations, and again, you would need to determine risk. Significant risk studies automatically require full IDE from the FDA, followed by IRB approval. Non-significant studies would be considered abbreviated IDEs with IRB approval. If you were able to answer yes to all of the testing, then your diagnostic device study could be considered exempt from IDE regulations. Now, you do not need to go to the FDA to determine exemption if you can provide justification that your study meets the exemption criteria when you submit your protocol to the IRB of record. However, if the IRB disagrees with your assessment of risk, meaning they're not comfortable with your non-significant risk determination, then you would need to submit your proposal to the FDA. There's 
two paths to consider. You could do a study risk determination submission to the FDA, or you could submit a full IDE application to the FDA. However, the FDA decides that's how the study will be tracked, whether significant or non-significant risk, exempt or full IDE. So let's go back and look at the determination for risk. So we've provided you some guidance on asking the FDA for study risk determination. We have a cover letter sample that you can use. And all the information that you'd need to include to help the FDA in their decision. And then the address for submission of your study risk determination. So I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for visiting Regard.